Welcome back to another session of Understanding Human Anatomy and our discussion of the abdominal wall. In this video, I'm starting with the diagram we ended with in, in the third part of the abdominal wall, just to give us a, a, an orientation. What I'm going to do is draw a line to indicate us cutting a section through the abdominal wall and then we'll look at the edge of that cut. So I'm going to use the same colors I used when I drew the muscles in on the previous diagrams. So let's start with the transverse abdominus muscle. and just sketch it in here in red. And next we'll go with the internal oblique muscle and I'm leaving a rather large space between them just so that I have room to show you um, some things in a minute and then in blue we'll have the external oblique muscle. So if I put labels up here and the internal oblique That's in green, and then the external oblique. rather large space between the transverse abdominus and the internal oblique. And this space is for vessels and nerves to run. So like we had in the thorax, we have a neurovascular space. And the neurovascular space will have a segmental artery be analogous to the intercostal artery, a segmental vein and an anterior ramus
of a spinal nerve. So let me draw these structures in. vein and the nerve so I can put lines to these structures neurovascular space vein and the nerve. Now, of course we're going to have some fascia in here and we're going to have a layer of transversalis fascia just deep to the transverse abdominis muscle. So this is the transversalis fascia. And the transversalis fascia is a lot like the endothoracic fascia we talked about in the thorax in that it's it's a relatively loose fascia. It's a deep fascia but relatively loose. And then just internal to the transversalis fascia is the parietal peritoneum. This is analogous to the parietal pleura we saw in the thorax. Then on the external side, we're going to have some superficial fascia and 
in the abdomen there are two kinds of superficial fascia and we will talk about them although I'm not going to distinguish them in the diagram here And the superficial fascia is either campers and scarpus fascia and scarpus fascia. which is a dense fascia whereas camper's fascia is the typical fatty loose fascia you expect to see in subcutaneous connective tissue. So we'll put a line over to the superficial fascia. Again, I'm not going to try and differentiate campers and scarpas in the diagram. And I'll touch up a couple of the lines here. like so. Finally, we have skin. And I'll draw the skin in in black like so. label in there so you can see that the abdominal wall is a lot like the thoracic wall we have three layers of muscle there's a neurovascular space between the middle layer of muscle and the inner, innermost layer of muscle Neurovascular space contains artery, vein, nerve running through it. We have the transversalis fascia, which is analogous to the endothoracic fascia. And we have the parietal peritoneum, which would be analogous to the parietal pleura in the thorax. On the external side, we have superficial fascia composed of the loose campers and the dense scarpus fascia and then we have skin. That concludes our discussion of the abdominal wall. In the next video we'll discuss the rectus sheath in a little more detail. Thank you for your attention.